Hi, how are you? It's Travson here, and welcome back to our adventures in Hardcore Classic WoW. Last episode, we completed some quests in the Shimmering Flats. And today, we are going to continue completing quests in this zone. We have a few more to do, and we are going to pick up another one today, which is called A Bump in the Road. Trackmaster Zarin. This guy looks kind of cool. After the big crash with the Goblin's Red Thunder Racer and a Basilisk, Kronkreider hired me on to take care of the track. I don't know what all the animals out on the flats are feeding on to grow so big, but we have to be careful to thin them out so they won't wander onto the track when a race is going on. Tell you what, if you want to go out and make a little profit, go out and remove the Basilisks from the area. That was the most interesting voice I have heard so far. I wonder if most of the torrents sound like that or it's just Trackmaster Zarin. Alright, so we're done with the Scorpids. But we still have to slay Tortoises and Crystal Hides. I think that's it. Seems like there's a bunch of Of those crystal hides to the south. We'll go north first, though. It seems like there's more tortoises to the north. Let's make sure we get our zooms going here. All right, here we go. Back to slaying tortoises. So we got a stun off. Then we get a stun on these tortoises. It seems like we get two free hits without getting hit back. Oh, we got another tortoise coming in. He wants to join in on the fight. Looks like he's backing off. And BlizzCon is coming soon, guys. There's been a bunch of leaks supposedly who knows if they're true kind of hoping this one is not true because it would not get me too excited about the next retail expansion you gotta be kidding me score could come from there's a leak recently and we're going to a new continent another continent that we did not know about and it's called Avaloran. The distant lands of Avaloran lay beyond the western horizon of Azeroth's storming seas. Isolated for millennia, those that call these enchanted kingdoms home have relied upon the living world beneath them, bound to sacred oaths, and divided by old hatreds. It seems like the elements will be uh, a common theme again, if this is true. And then the, the race we were going, the people we're going to be dealing with are called the Agarond. Charged with the defense of this harsh desert plateau, the Furious Agora have ruled over the earthen domain with brutal efficiency. As new threats arrive, the unity of these once unwavering Goliaths has been fractured, giving rise to a conflict that sunders the region. So that's kind of interesting. And then Kazal Gar, nestled in the secluded mountain crags, this roaring canyon surges with devastating elemental power suppressed by the constructs of an ancient facility. Known for their hardened nature and mastery of the skies, the storm riders of Kazal Gar have forged a unique legacy on the top, their airy strongholds. So we'll see if this is true. Kind of hoping it's not because I don't know. I'm not really too excited about that. I 
But to be honest, I haven't been really excited about like WoW's storyline since maybe the maybe when Pandaria started. Once Pandaria started, I was like Mr. Pandaria. I was like, I don't I don't really know where this is going. But when it went back, Warlords of Draenor was kind of cool. I thought that idea was was cool, but they had to go back in time for it to work, which was kind of confusing. Yeah, we have to slay these scavengers. I forgot about these guys. So I don't know what to think about this, if that's a, an actual expansion. But we'll see. Maybe they'll have some cool game modes. That dragon play was a cool idea, right? The dragon riding was pretty fun. I enjoyed it when I was playing dragon flight. But I just ended up playing mostly classic WoW after I leveled up an evoker level 70. Let's use a bandage. Going to be able to use bandages today because we won't have to deal with these poisonous scorpits. damage to us. Keep focusing on the turtles here. I'm not sure we'll finish all the quests today. We'll try to do as many as we can. We still have quite a few mobs to slay. We have to get 10 bones from the vultures. We we'll still need four hardened tortoise shells. And then there's a, a lot of, I think, over 20 basilisks we have to take down. Use a, a bandage here. Hopefully, we're okay here. Done. Missing a lot against this guy. He is two levels higher than us. Here we go, finally got a stun off. shells to go. We're actually getting a decent amount of shells today.
hate when we miss. <laughs> we miss so much. I think it's because we're using an axe. Our hit isn't as high. It would be it's a mace or a sword. I wonder if our axe is oh, almost they're not even maxed. Only at 164. It's beating the crap out of us. I actually died of this guy. Hit him, my gosh. What a battle that was. I think we need to eat something after that. I think we got this stamina buff. And these elixirs. I think these tortoises are probably the toughest things we've fought so far, so far in this zone. I really can't deal with two of these guys. And normally I wouldn't even come to this zone. Kind of just stumbled upon it. Since we were in Ratchet, I thought it was a good idea just to come down here and do a few quests. Why not? We get some Light points as well. Ah. We're just missing everything. <laughs> I think we're in D stance. All right, we just need one more shell. And we are done battling these tortoises and so we can move on to vultures and those crocodile guys. Basilisks. And we'll fight this one, level 34. They have a lot of armor too. It's, it's kind of rough dealing with these tortoises. Physical DPS. It's probably better to fight them. It's like a mage or a warlock. And you can tell that when you fight one that's just like one level above, it's not too bad. But the level 35s are a pain, man. I can barely hit them. go we're done it's good let's bandage up here deal with these crystal hide basilisks goes. Oh, 
Might have to use a pot here. It's not hitting us for too much, though. It's starting to catch up. Oh, nice. Hunter's helping us out. How kind of you. Very kind hunter there. Alright, so I guess we'll turn in this quest. And then we'll head south. We'll deal with as many basilisks as we can. My brother is making progress with his new fuel design, and that has me worried. I need to start work on a tortoise shell fuel tank as soon as possible. Travisine, do you have those shells you yet? You got them! Thanks, adventurer! Wow, these shells are harder than I thought. Huh. When I work with them, I'll probably bend a whole box full of tools. Crusted tail fins. Our rocket car is the fastest thing on the flats. So fast that I'm afraid friction is going to tear it apart. To prevent that, I need to create a composite to coat the car's moving parts. Oh, this is it from uh, but not Stranglethorn Vale. We need to fight to the Murlocs there. Or time spent on the shimmering flats will eat That's a away. tough one. Have you heard of the Vile Reef Adventurer? It's For on elites. the coast of Stranglethorn Vale. Salt scale Murlocs live there. And their tail fins are a crucial ingredient of my In the Badlands. I guess we'll pick up this letter as well. Why not? I'm developing a new engine that'll make the car go so fast. I have to go to the Badlands, to but I know it. probably hold I just on to this to for quite a while. That can handle very, very heavy stress. All my trials have failed because I can't make pistons hard enough. But there is someone who might know how. His name is Martek the Exiled. He is a great smith and knows more about metal than anyone. I don't know if we'll do this Take one. This letter. Probably I know not. He can I'm going to abandon it. He's far, far away. In Azeroth, in the Badlands, in a camp with a goblin. Find him! So what do you have to do for that quest? Is, um... You have to go all the way down to Stranglethorn Vale to this place called the Vile Wreath. And there's a bunch of elite murlocs underwater. And, um... We're not gonna go there. <laughs> it's also the place where, um... I almost died on my rope. We DC'd while we were underwater in that area, so... Should probably stay away. I was lucky that my rogue had vanished, so I was able to log back in and vanish and get my breath back. So yeah, we'll probably stay away from that place. But the other quests aren't bad to hold on to. We'll eventually he head over to the Badlands. guy come from man i had a screen sh scroll out a bit i actually die here it's kind of harder than last time let's see if we can handle this what kind of tortoise coming this way i think we'll be all right Second time a vulture's snuck up on us. I 
Vultures are pretty easy to deal with, though. They don't seem to hit very hard. Neither do we. Slowly just... Just to get them down. Looks like another basil's just spawned on top of us. Remember to keep battle shout up. Interesting jump he did at the end when he died. <laughs> Alright, so let's, uh, we're okay. Can pull another before we get another food buff going. Need to get some more food. Dude, maybe we'll have to buy some meat off of the auction house. That was a big, really big heroic strike there. I think against these level 33s, we can stay in battle stance. The gazers, though, are a little bit different. 30, these ones over here. It's probably better off being in D stance. And fight those ones so we can kick the gaze we haven't been hit by one of those yet which is good it does stun you for quite a while few more crystal hides. One more after this. And then it's just four more gazers, and then we just have to hunt vultures down.
And the last one's just over here. Alright, so Looks like these gazers are being protected by crystal hides. I wonder if I can pull this gazer without pulling the crystal hide. Let's see. Yeah, it seems to be working well. Nice hit right there. a bandage quick and we got a feral druid here night elf feral druid named Furburger. <laughs> ah. I wonder what Furburger's doing over there I was picking up the, the parts that nice just got two more to deal with after this cool crystal hide right there watch out our last gazer right there. Yeah, hard pull though. Vulture without pulling that other basilisk. It's a pretty peaceful place to level, though. Shimmering flats. Probably the flattest land in all of Azeroth, that's for sure. Seems like the drop rate on the Vulture Bones is pretty high too, which is nice. Maybe we will hit level 34 today, guys. Trying to avoid these... These 
with Crocolis here. It's going to be kind of tough, though. Seem to be everywhere. I think we'll have to leave that vulture alone for now. We'll just hunt down this gazer. I wonder why they call him the gazer. Probably because of that ability he uses. Maybe we should get hit by it sometime just to see what it's like. It's probably going to use it pretty soon. I got hit by it. Wow. Five seconds stun. Yeah, if you're low and you get hit by that, you're probably dead. Alright, we are done with the Crocolis, guys. Let's head up and we'll head over to... Uh, oh, there's Saltstone Vassals to the north. Alright, so we'll head north. And we will deal with those Vassals. Looks like a level 60 died. Jordan Snack, the rogue. Sorry wasn't looking at chat was his last words. And he died in Skolomance to a Skolomance Necromancer. Yeah, Skolomance is tough place is no joke. <laughs> Level uh, 42 warrior died. Potato King. And Desolus to a Magrami Spectre. Yeah, we gotta watch out when we go to Desolus. Guy died at level 42. I think you'd be safe and desolate at that level. Got a couple people flying into. There's a salt stone here. It's supposed to be the easiest to deal with. Here we have a few people flying into Gadget Stand. Happy we got that play point. We'll be, we won't have to trek down here. When we want to go and level into Naris, which will be pretty soon. Ten more levels. Couldn't give me a mark of the wild. Man, none of these druids have been giving me a mark of the wild. Not one yet. I think there's an area close to here that where there's like a bunch of vultures hanging around carcass. Probably down this way. Yeah, we would be wrecking these basilisks. We were arms. But we're surviving, so I, I'm happy with it. This is honestly my first time leveling as Prot. I just wanted to try it. And I still think I would recommend it for hardcore. 
If you're not playing hardcore, then I wouldn't recommend it. If you're just playing, like, you know, regular classic, just play arms. It's better. Do more damage. <laughs> But prot's pretty damn chill. But I wouldn't go all the way prot, that's for sure. We will be switching to arms eventually. But it got us to these good levels, guys, when we were able to unlock, you know, last stand, shield wall, retaliation. They called it really good at warrior abilities. We were able to get them all. Because we were... We were brought. I, wonder, I think we probably would have survived if we were arms, but the dungeons would have been really tough. I think they would have maybe died in a, in a lot of those dungeon experiences we had where we almost died a couple times. I don't think I would do a dungeon... As an arms warrior in hardcore, I think that's a little reckless. No people do it though. But you're just making, you know, the job job harder for the for the healer. You need to have like a real, like amazing team comp position if you if you want to go arms. But I still think Prod's better. Like, if you, the best composition is just is for dungeons, I believe, is three mages and a uh, disc priest. The mages just do AOE. And, and you're better off being a prod warrior for that because, you know, your survivability is higher. And. You will be able to round up, you know, all the mobs without, like, worrying about getting one shot or dying. That's really all your job is if you were in a comp where it was three mages and a, and a disc priest. The mages can be either fire or frost. It doesn't really matter. I think frost is a little bit better, though, for survivability. Because once you group them up, they all start blizzarding. And then eventually the mobs get close and one mage uses Frost Nova and then they do a Frost Nova rotation. And then as a prot warrior, what you do is you just taunt off. Taunt the mobs off that get close to the mages. Oh, look at all the turtles here. So let's head back this way. It looks like we're out of the Basilisk area. We need five more Vulture Bones as well. Oh, Would have been awesome if they allowed you to race here. This also reminds me of uh, Star Wars Episode One, Where Anakin is, uh, you know, a little kid. And they're doing pod racing. Kind of reminds me of that. Okay, we found a basilisk surrounded by scorpions. There's a few of them, nice.
Okay. Let's try to find some more basils here. We need four more. Seems like we dealt with the hard ones first. And there isn't really many um, vultures flying around. Guess that's why they have the drop rate so high. It's pretty much like 100% drop rate on the bones. There's a vulture there. We should pick them up. Need five more bones. The damage in prod's not too bad. Like any mob that's like under our level, we completely wreck. off this quest right here. A couple basilisks right over here. And we need to make our way to Ratchet eventually. Just to turn in a quest. Might be a good idea to do that before we head off to the wetlands. We still have a few quests here that we can do. That's a pretty good pet right there. It's like a rare gorilla. Are those the, are these the thing? Those are the elder gorillas in Strangleton. I think this guy feels sorry for me because I'm a pro warrior. So he shoots the mobs. It's like, look at this guy. Yeah, we're pretty much started fighting at the same time as us hunter. It was pretty damn close. How generous! We finished that mob around the same time. He has a pet and, a, you know, himself shooting it. Or if he's playing survival. All right, now we're on going vulture hunting. There's one. Need four more vultures. Scorpions are kind of annoying. Don't want to pull both of them.
All right, three more to go. Let's see if there's any more around here. I don't know which way should we, we should go. Should we head down here again? It's kind of tough to reach those vultures down there, though. Let's walk over here a bit, and then we'll head south. Do a big circle. See if we can find the final three. Here are the insects. Servants of Cthulhu, the Silithid. Oh, I thought this was uh, was a vulture for us to kill. That's a hunter pet. I'm not too sure if we'll hit 34. It'll be it'll be close, but I don't think the quest will give us 34. This guy better watch out. Oh, he's going to get stunned. He'll be okay. Long stun, though. <laughs> no vultures here. Kind of getting a little close to these basilisks. Supposedly they're in the back. I don't really see any. 36 Fire Mage. Look at the damage he does to this thing. Two shots it. <laughs> yeah, not competing with a mage at all. Fighting against these basilisks. Boom. Pretty much dead by the time they get to him. Inventory's full. Well, that's not good. Let's get rid of this, uh... The meat? What's the cheapest thing on us? Too sure what we want to get rid of. This fire fin snapper. Yeah, I guess so. Could have sold that on the auction house though for like a silver, but it's no big deal. And yeah, no vultures around here. I guess we'll have to go this way. Damn it. How long it's gonna take us to fight this guy? Compared to that mage. <laughs> this is a great place to come to if you're a caster, I think. It's a rough, rough place to level as a physical DPS. It's not too bad, but it takes some time. Like if you're a mage, you can AoE a lot of these mobs. Just group them all up and AoE them down. They're all pretty damn slow. Oh, there we go, vulture, nice. scared me. Oh, it's a tortoise. All right, two more to go. It should just be up here. Looks like this guy crashed his goblin racer. Really looks like the pod racers from...
from uh, Star Wars Episode One. Forget the names of the racers in that pod race. It's kind of funny if they referred to some of their names in like around here in, Tenar in uh, Shimmering Flats. So over here, there's supposedly some some vultures. Now uh, we got a couple of people fighting over here. <laughs> We've got a lot of funny names on this server. Looks like there's no vultures here. There's one. That's awesome. There's two. This is it. This is where you want to come. Here is the carcass we were looking for, guys. This is the jackpot. Imagine we just stop getting bones now. <laughs> Be surprised if we don't get a bone here. Done questing in the shimmering flats. There we go. So our inventory's full. We have quite a bit of stuff to sell. Should have done that when we went back the first time. Let's go turn these quests in. Then maybe we'll head down to Gadgetstan, take a flight over to Ratchet. Turn in a few quests. Maybe drop stuff off at the bank while we're in Ratchet. Yeah, we did all right here. It's probably the first time we actually fought mobs that were above our level. We have been fighting mostly mobs under our level for most of our journey. But I don't think we'll get level 34 today. This quest will be close, so we'll probably have a bar left. Yo! If you have those bones for me, I was just about to start working on lightening the steering rig. But I don't want to open her up without all the parts I need. Great! I can get the crew working on this right away. Thanks, adventurer. Our racing team is the pride Speak of goblins to Gaz everywhere. Nice. You'd be surprised at some of the people who contribute in one way or another to our team. You know Gaslo? He tracks down parts from around the world for us. He even came down to work on one of our rigs once. A few weeks ago, he said he'd send us a new prototype fuel regulator, but it hasn't come yet. He's usually very prompt. Maybe you wouldn't mind going to Ratchet to ask him about it. I wouldn't be so pushy, but the gnomes are gaining on us. I hope you didn't kill any of the basilisks on the tracks themselves. Okay. It takes a long time for the carcasses to decay in the sun, and I'd rather not have to take a shovel out to clean up. All right, well, let's head down to Gadget Sand, and then we'll make our way to ratchet we should make a decent amount of coin from all this junk we've collected
And we're not picking up this quest. We're, we're not doing that. I'm going to try to avoid any quest that brings us underwater. <laughs> There's the hunter that was helping us out, I think. I think it was a different one. I don't know if it was the one with the vulture pet. We got a decent amount of XP. I think we'll actually probably hit 34 after we turn in the two quests in Ratchet. And that means we'll be pretty much ready, I think, for for some dungeons. Not too sure what we should do first. Should we head to, I guess we'll probably head to Graveyard. Why not? It's a good, good place to start. And then we have, you know, Razorfen Crawl. Which is a tough one. No more, no more gone. All those dungeons should take us up to 40, maybe even a little higher than that. And then once we get around that level, we can go to Stranglethorn Vale. Stranglethorn Vale gets pretty damn easy at, at around that level. There are some quests we could do in STV. Like these Hem and Nessing wary ones. The Welcome to the Jungle. I had a bunch of, uh, I think, baby tigers and... and panthers. Raptors. It's not too bad. Alright, off to Ratchet we go. Where would you like to fly to? Same 666. To get to Ratchet from Gadget From one goblin zone to another. Let's see if there's been any high level deaths. I think the main thing to do in hardcore, if you get past, if you get to like level 30, it gets, it gets pretty chill. You're not even halfway to 60 at that point, but I've noticed that once you get all your abilities and your gears, your gears all set up, you're also your talent trees, you know, a little bit filled at that point, the game becomes pretty damn easy, I think. As long as you play it safe. I think the hard levels are are 1 to 20. And you get a lot of good abilities, it seems like, from like 20 to 30. That make you pretty damn hard to kill. Also, when you combine the ability to use the auction house as well to buy gear and also elixirs, you're, you're tough to kill. <laughs> and you combine that with engineering. I'll be surprised if we die. I think the only way we die is if we mess up in a dungeon. But who knows? We've almost died a couple times. And here we are, Theramore. I 
But we're at a good point in the game now. We have pretty much all the flight points we want. We're almost at a part where there's like a bunch of dungeons to do and we can just do dungeons all the way to like 40 plus. 40 to 50 is kind of boring. It's like my... It's the part I... I I don't really like 40 to 50 that much. But we can make it a little bit more fun if we do a couple Zulfurax. There really isn't many dungeons to do from 40 to 50 that I would consider. There's Maradon. We could do Maradon late 40s. I think Maradon's a decent one to do, like, in the 50s, actually. And then after that, I would just avoid dungeons because Temple of... Talakar. Sunken Temple, that's a tough one. It's probably it's the easiest of the two though. Black Rock Depths is much harder than Sunken Temple, but should probably avoid doing those two. Until we hit max level. So we might as well enjoy all the dungeons we can do while we can. That's a good thing about being a uh, alliance, you know. We've got no more egg and close to us. That's kind of like the, well, I guess, stockades is like the rage fire chasm for the alliance, and then no more gone is sort of like wailing caverns. You can do, you know, no more gone as a horde player, but it, it's quite the journey, sort of like how it is doing Wailing Caverns as an Alliance player. All right, so here we are back in Ratchet. Let's go see Gazlo. He's one of my favorite characters in Heroes of the Storm to play. It's a lot of fun. Pretty awesome card, too, in Hearthstone. I ain't got all day. Thrall paid me and my boys well for helping out with the construction of Ogremar. So I decided to set up a port here. We do most of our business through Booty Bay and Baron Revelgas. Podzik sent you, huh? You know, Podzik was one of the most respected tinkerers in Undermine before he retired to start working on the racers. The first thing he did when he joined the team was develop the two engine model racers. Could be that the businesses will suffer without him working with the Tinker's Union, but who cares, right? There's nothing like the races. Says, Back to what you came here about. For I know I promised Pazik that I'd deliver a new fuel regulator for him, but I still haven't received it yet. Revelgaz over in Booty Bay said he'd have it shipped over, but it might be it slipped through the cracks somehow. If that's true, there's not much we can do about it. We can at least find out if it was dispatched from Booty Bay. Check in with Wharfmaster Lawskill over there. He should be able to check the cargo records. All right, so we'll eventually head down there. When we start questing in Stranglethorn Vale, we can... Actually, I surely should have picked it up. The boat's here. Damn it. That's all good. Hey, how you doing? Keep it real. Speak up. Tell me, are you dropping off or picking up? Oh, yes. Parts for travel. Nice. I'm glad you're here. These things have been sitting out here for days, and I was afraid they'd rust. Oh, man. Here's Cravel's package, adventurer. And when you deliver it, tell him. If he wants more special orders, then he'll have to pay his tab. All right, well, we'll do that later as well. Probably when we start uh, leveling in Tanaris, we'll deliver this quest down in the Shimmering Flats. It's a, it's a higher level quest anyway, so we can do that in our 40s when we start leveling in Tanaris. So let's head over here, have a little chat with somebody, sell all of our junk, and then I'm going to check out the bank and see how we're doing. I got what you need. Large fangs. I wonder if these actually sell in the auction house. Probably not. Keep the vulture meat, though. I'm going to hold on to everything else. Have a good one. Nice, we're at 20 gold again, guys. 
That is good. Yo. Okay. Which tin we got? Not much. Can make some iron bars. I don't know if I really want to smelt all this Be right good. now. Can do it though. We're here. Let's do it, whatever. Make like 10 copper from smelting this stuff. But we'll make even more when we smelt, turn it into tin. I mean, turn it into bronze. We're gonna make a good, decent amount of coin from bronze bars, I think. I hope. See what happens. You don't really need it to uh, level up our engineering. We've got a decent amount of silver here as well. This will lighten up our bags a little bit before we head off to the wetlands. Thing is, we can, you know, we could probably head over to, to, to Iron Forge soon and deal with a lot of this stuff. This Iron Forge is like a short trip from the wetlands. It's all good. We'll do this now. Episode's a little over an hour. I think that's probably what we're going to do, though. We'll probably make our way to Iron Forge. Put some stuff up on the auction house. Maybe we can do a little bit more uh, engineering leveling. It'd also be a good idea to purchase some food. And get a couple cooking levels. Maybe that's what we should do is let's get our cooking up at 147. Is the boat here? A lot that I want to do. That's actually a really good idea because we're here. I don't want it to travel. Traveling's a big thing in this game. <laughs> I don't want to have to travel from... Uh, from the wetlands all the way back to Booty Bay. The boat's here when we get out. We will um, hop on. not, then maybe we'll just call it here and we'll head over to Booty Bay next episode. Oh, the boat's here. Nice. Let's do it. Hopefully we can make it. It's good we were able to smelt all of that. We're gonna make it. Now, I, I hope he's there. I'm pretty sure that's the, he's there's a cooking cooking trainers in Booty Bay. I'll have to look here quick. Kelsey Yachts. That's who we got to find. I think he teaches us the next level. I'm not too sure. I know the final level comes from the guy down in, in Gadgetstan. He's like the best cook in Azeroth, that goblin. Supposedly. Well, we'll go find Kelsey Yance. I'm not too sure where the heck he is in Booty Bay. Supposedly he's in the Old Port Authority building, which is your first building you come 
to on the docks when you get off the ship from Ratchet. Hope this he's the one who actually teaches us this. We'll see. I'm just this is a complete guess. I just remember we had to go to Booty Bay to level up uh could could have been fishing too. What's our fishing at? Fishing's at 110. It's another thing we could do next episode. We could do a little fishing in Booty Bay. And then uh, get our fishing leveled up as well while we're here. I haven't done a fishing episode in quite a while. Where the heck are we? <laughs> I'm like, what the heck's that song all about? <laughs> Thought we were in Stormwind for a second. I remember, like, when I was in Stormwind, we couldn't really level up our cooking. What is this guy? This is an enchanted sword. What's he got on that fiery weapon? The sword he has is BOE. It's 29 gold, 30 gold in the auction house. That's insane, dude. The Takirtan Songblade. Nice weapon. Okay, here's the old Port Authority building. And here's the cook. I supply only the finest goods. This doesn't look like he's a cooking trainer. See you later. How are you? Gives you a bunch of cool recipes though. Safe travel. Any cooking trainer around here? Could be wrong about that, but we're going to stay here, guys. One thing we could also do is... Uh, just learn... Uh, goblin or gnome engineering. Not too sure which one we should choose. Probably gnomish. Yeah, guys, I'm going to call the episode here. Next episode, we'll start out in Booty Bay. Maybe we'll do a little bit of fishing. And, uh, yeah. So, see you guys next episode. As always, thanks for watching. Keep your heads up. Later.